Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych. I'm Dr. Cody Rowell, your medical doctor confidant. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the five core principles of neurofeedback training. We're gonna do a live demonstration on the Divergence platform with Heather Hergraves, who's a therapist from the Neuromeditation Institute. I learned a lot from Heather as we went through this live training, and I, for once, was a client slash patient. We'll distill what Heather taught me into those five principles. We'll see how Heather took a look at the raw EEG signal to make sure that the neurosity crown was on my head correctly. Number two is something that we've talked about on this channel a lot. It's called calibration, or Heather would call it baseline thresholding. Number three is the holy grail of neurofeedback training. It is association with internal sensations as you're going through the neurofeedback training. Number four is a therapy technique called shaping. And number five is self-regulation, which is what you take away from neurofeedback training to ultimately help you in your everyday life with focus, memory, emotional control, and other skills that help you be the best that you can be every day. And if you enjoy the content that I'm bringing to you here on Tech for Psych, be sure to hit that like button so we please the YouTube algorithms and Tech for Psych gets more exposure. I really appreciate it. So let's dive in and take a look how Heather looks at the raw EEG signal and instructs me on how to use the Neurosity crown and place it on my head correctly. There's your EEG. So it's leveling out. So we've got like your C3 and C4 could probably so what I usually get people to do is put the crown a little bit higher on the back of the head and then push the top down a bit more. Yep. Yeah. Let's give it a second. Look at all that noise. Yeah. I have, what I see what clients do is they put it a little too low and then it starts to slip down during the training and you lose connectivity, especially people with long hair. So eye blinks and head movements, like the two training sensors we're using is PO3 and PO4. So because those are good, I don't worry too much, but yeah, CP4, CP3 are not like wonderfully connected. Little bits of tension. How's your jaw <sighs> tension these days? <laughs> yeah, I've actually had jaw problems lately. I think I've been clenching my jaw. Yeah, I can see. Number two is the baseline thresholding or the calibration. I've talked about this a lot on my YouTube channel in relation to the Muse headband and mind lift neurofeedback training. I recently did a video called Why You Always Feel Tired in the Morning. And what I did in that video was taking a look at my EEG brainwaves throughout the day and through different influences like waking up and hitting the snooze button, consuming alcohol, playing video games. All of these influences have a dramatic effect on where our EEG signals are at during the day. And you can see that they vary quite a bit throughout the day, which is why every time we do neurofeedback training, the program needs to get a baseline reading of one to two minutes. This allows it to set a threshold that you are trying to reach during the training itself. And the threshold will be set differently according to what brainwave you're targeting. Usually for alpha, it will encourage you to have higher levels of alpha than the baseline threshold. And for something like high beta, it will encourage you to have lower levels of high beta than the baseline threshold. Usually in the baseline, you're letting the mind kind of just wander aimlessly. You're not trying to do anything. And so then it starts. And based on the algorithms we have on the platform, based on the baseline, there is a threshold that has been set. So you can watch for a little bit to kind of get a sense of the percentage of success. How often is the client out of the red? And this is a reward protocol, which means we want them to be above the red. And on Cody's side, he'll be hearing rain. And every time the rain gets louder, he's being rewarded. It's about 57%, 59%. And if I wanted to make it a little bit easier, sometimes in the beginning, 70% is a nicer area where learning is a little bit easier frustration is a little bit lower number three really is the most important part when you're doing neurofeedback training when i do my brain circuit training program i often have clients somewhat confused within the first couple of weeks of doing the program because i do offer guidance on different meditation techniques to help control your brain waves as you're going through the neurofeedback experience but really one of the most important parts is 
becoming more self-aware of what's going on in your mind and your body that corresponds to the action that's happening on the screen. It really is the ultimate practice of becoming more self-aware so that you understand what it is that you're doing in your brain and your body to affect your brain waves. It's like, how do you teach someone how to ride a bike? You can give them all the advice you can about how to balance correctly, but at the end of the day, it's about trial and error and finding their own techniques about how to do it in a way that's satisfactory for them. So Cody, what you're looking for is the internal sensations, the felt sensation that goes with the rain. And you're using the feedback like a mirror. And that mirror is teaching you to pay more attention or to orient your awareness more towards the felt sense that occurs when the rain is louder. And also learning what is it that takes you out of that state when you lose the rain. And so I lowered the threshold a little bit more as the person and the client ends up settling into the state. We call it shaping. You just continue to kind of follow them where they're at. And what you'll see is that when he's creating more alpha, we usually see an ink. I think you're, you're doing so. well. How does yeah. it feel? Feels good. I feel very relaxed. Yeah. So you're, you're, I haven't changed your threshold in a bit and you're consistently increasing your alpha. Yeah. It's nice to be the patient or the client for once. Right. To receive. I feel cared for. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You all need to receive. Okay, great. So you can open your eyes and stop that. The next thing that we'll take a look at is called shaping. And this actually happens automatically in a lot of the neurofeedback trainings that you probably have done with the Muse headband or other gear. As your brainwaves change, the program will actually adjust the feedback levels to get even more change out of you. For example, if the feedback percentage is at 60% and you are hitting that 70% of the time in alpha brainwaves, the program will actually increase the difficulty so that you have to try harder to get that 60%. But one of the important things is that you don't want to discourage the client by making it too hard. So you adjust the difficulty level by increasing or lowering the threshold, which is called shaping, as Heather will explain right here. Um, so when we started, this was where the algorithm had kind of put your baseline. I always tell clients that if you do a baseline and then you find the training really hard, I would argue that you kind of you started too high. So you were already probably going into this like quiet state. And so it set your bar kind of high. And so if that's challenging, just like cut out of the screen and start again, and then try to let your mind wander a little bit more, meditate less. So then I was like, okay, that's too high for you. So I lowered your baseline down to here. And then it seemed a little bit too easy. So I brought it up a bit, but that was only giving you about 50% reward. And I'd like to keep you around 70. So I think when I brought this back down, you were playing between like 55 and 65 for a bit. And then as we continued to play, especially near the end, you started trying that different meditation and you started noticing, oh, wow, I'm really starting to feel this more. So technically, I probably could have thresholded and made this a little bit more challenging for you, but because we were having a conversation, I didn't want to. And the fifth concept, the takeaway from all this is called self-regulation. And really what that is, is the ability to associate your internal associations with what's going on in the screen allowing you to have more control over your own mind and your body. And imagine what you can do with that. You can improve your focus, your emotional regulation, your motivation, different things that can make you very successful in your everyday life. Everybody benefits in different ways, but some of my clients who are really struggling with internal states of dysregulation, particularly dissociative states, really do well with the crown because some of the neuro meditations uh, really directly work with the DMN, which is tied to our sense of self. And as you start exercising the DMN, it really helps people settle back in. And I've seen a lot of clients develop, they have more insight, their capacity to calm improves, and they recognize that in themselves. So their witnessing starts to get better. So they're unblending from these states of hypervigilance or dissociation and it's like they start to blossom into themselves again their boundaries become a little more clear it's a little more comfortable to settle 
and the feedback gives them that like you know the breadcrumbs back to regulation all right i hope you learned as much from heather as i did i just talked to the ceo of divergence alex knee yesterday and they have a ton of new features coming out on their platform very soon that i'm excited to share here on the channel if you want to learn more about how your eeg levels vary throughout the day and require calibration for neural feedback exercises take a look at this video here why you're always tired in the morning it's really fun we took a look at my different eeg levels throughout the day and i think you'll learn a lot there as well as always i'm dr cody roll with tech for Psych. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.